Welcome fellow cruisers and thanks for watching Backroads Tours today. A few days ago I brought you four positive, uplifting stories coming from the world of cruising, but today we have to even things out a bit, so here are a couple of stories that aren't quite so positive. Remember the Villa V Odyssey? It's the cruise ship that offered a lifetime world cruise for about half a million dollars per couple. They were supposed to begin cruising on May 15th following a multi-million dollar renovation in Belfast, Northern Ireland's Titanic Yard. Well, maybe you can blame it on the curse of the Titanic, but inspectors kept finding things that were wrong with their ship and the cruise date got pushed back further and further. The latest problem has been with the rudder stocks, which are pretty essential if you want to do something like, oh, I don't know, steer the ship. Now, bear in mind that this is not a new ship. In fact, it's 31 years old. But when Villa V bought it, they were assured that it was in great condition, despite the maintenance records having somehow been deleted. It should also be noted that this ship was sitting idle for about four years, so there were probably some things that needed to be replaced just because they had been unused and neglected for so long. The new launch date is July 20th. Now, the Odyssey still needs to float out and undergo tests, certifications, and clearances from maritime officials. Still, everyone is keeping their fingers crossed. The ship can hold 924 residents, and many of them have been in Belfast for two months waiting for their lifetime cruise to begin. Hopefully, there won't be any additional unforeseen problems, and the Villa V Odyssey will be able to set sail by Saturday. Last week, I told you about the anti-tourism protests in Barcelona, where demonstrators were shouting, tourists go home, and squirting tourists with squirt guns. A certain organization there is calling for an end to tourism and their demands include shutting down the cruise port. It looks like Barcelona isn't the only city facing protests. There's a port in northwestern France and I apologize ahead of time because I know I'm going to mispronounce the name. Concarneau? That would be my best guess. Anyway, about 20 activists from two groups called Stop Cruises BZH Collective and Extinction Rebellion blocked the luxury ship Seven Seas Voyager from docking. Protesters were in small boats and the cruise ship couldn't safely navigate around them, so the Seven Seas Voyager decided to head back out to sea with its 706 passengers and about 450 crew members. Back in May, there was another protest at another French port when Silver Sea Cruises Silver Wind arrived. The Silver Wind was able to dock, but authorities limited the number of guests who could go on shore for safety reasons. The main things these groups are protesting are cruising's environmental impact, and they believe cruising is a symbol of social inequality. Before we get to the final story, I'd like to let you know that if you'd like to make my world a little bit happier, you can start by giving this video a like. Now, you may not like the subject matter, but I hope you appreciate my effort in bringing it to you. And then, if you're feeling super generous, please subscribe to the Backroads Tourist channel if you haven't already. I have a blast bringing you these videos a few times each week, and I sure hope you enjoy it too. I have some very interesting videos in the works, and I don't want you to miss out out, so subscribe today. Last week was a rough one for Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas. Late last week, they were winding up their cruise after leaving Cozumel and heading back to Galveston when there was a medical emergency on board. The ship turned around to go back to Cozumel, but on the way back, unfortunately, the passenger passed away. So they turned around again and started back to Galveston. Because of this incident, the Mariner of the Seas was several hours late in getting back to port, which led to them being several hours late in starting the next cruise. And because of this domino effect, they're going to skip the port of Costa Mea and do a sea day instead to get things back on schedule. Any excursions booked in that port through Royal Caribbean will of course be refunded, and they're going to give each guest $50 in onboard credit. Now, they don't have to do this, but it's a nice goodwill gesture. This is the second time in a row that the Mariner of the Seas has missed the port of Costa Mea. Her previous cruise was scheduled to leave Galveston on July 8th, but Hurricane Burl forced the departure to be moved back to the 9th, and Costa Mea got skipped in that itinerary too. 
Finally, no details have been given on the nature of the medical emergency, and I think that standard procedure out of consideration for the family and friends. My condolences go out to those who were affected by this tragedy, which includes the family and loved ones, as well as the crew members who were involved. And thank you again for watching today. I appreciate it. I'm Jeff. I hope to see you on a future cruise.